All right, let's get started. So today we're going to be talking about three strategies to increase your income and put an end to normalizing debt. And um, before we get started, if you want to just let me know who you are, where you're from, that'd be awesome. Go ahead and just give a comment here. Um, so I want to talk about how society has not only normalized massive amounts of debt. So we see people who have like 100K in student loans, 250K or more in mortgage debt, 400K for a car, and to get approved for two or three credit cards before you're even 25, that's another $25,000 more in debt. And before you know it, you're wondering if you ever will get out from underneath this. And in fact, many people have realized already that they would never get out from underneath it with a traditional job. And that's why they started their own businesses, their own company. And what that does is it does create financial freedom to never have an income cap, to never have someone else dictate the raise that you get. But the scam we see and hear is that by not spending money on a cup of coffee or going out to dinner, we're all of a sudden going to be magically released of this debt. And as entrepreneurs, we know that that just simply is not true. So what is true? Well, making money is easier than not spending and punishing yourself. I'm gonna say it again. Making more money is easier than not spending money and punishing yourself in the process. So you can add an additional 500,000 to your income with ease, but cutting $500,000 out of your spending might be challenging, especially in the economy that we're in right now. All right, who am I? I'm Caitlin. I'm the owner of Citizen Virtual Business Services. We're a virtual bookkeeping company, and our goal is to help seven-figure plumbing contractors to increase their profits without spending any more time in their books. So we're going to start discussing some of the main points and a plan that you can make. So let's discuss three different strategies to increase your income. Strategy number one, raise your rates. Look, if you've been running your business for a few years and you have not raised your rates, you are really doing yourself a disservice. I'm not saying to raise your rates with no reason or data to back you up at all, but I'm sure that you can find a way to support raising the cost of your services. Name anything in our society right now that hasn't increased in cost in just the last few months or the year. The cost of living has gone up. The cost of groceries have gone up. Um, inflation has gone up. All these different things really uh, are hitting your bottom line. And so we definitely want to make sure that you're keeping up at least with inflation when you're raising your rates, if not more, because your experience has grown. All right, step number two. This one's easy, Matt. <laughs> Go get more customers. So when was the last time you promoted your services, updated your marketing? If you're not selling, you're not growing. There is a, a well-known uh, person, founder of ANA Business Consulting, uh, Parvin Daryani, I hope I pronounced that correctly, says, it should be a thumb rule to spend an hour daily on the sales, sales targets, and taking feedback from sales managers. So be consistent with your efforts to increase your sales by adding new sales prospects regularly. Diversify your marketing. Build a long-term relationship with current customers. Retain them through better policies while aiming at referral sales. That could be also thinking about digital marketing, next door app, local Facebook groups, et cetera, et cetera. The types of customers you want are like the customers that you have, that you love. And so do more of what works and less of what doesn't work. And try and get more of the clients that you like and less of the clients that you don't. All right. Number three, reduce the cost of your overhead operations. You should be tracking KPIs for your business, but are you tracking the right ones, if any at all? What does your inventory turnover look like? How about numbers that 
pertain to any products or services that you provide? Are you investing money in a particular type of service or product that's really not giving you a return on your investment? Could you be using that money to promote something that's already selling really well or working really well? Make this industry specific to you. So you are a plumbing contractor. You want to figure out what works for your industry and go ahead and try and figure that out or work with somebody who works with your industry specifically and have them help you brainstorm some of this information. It's really up to you to decide what numbers you should be tracking. So understanding what data will help you to reduce your operating costs is really going to be important. All right, what's the big takeaway? We have fallen victim to this debt normalization scam. But as an entrepreneur, you don't have to remain a victim here. Your options are greater than someone working for an employer. Remember, it's easier to make $500,000 than it is to save $500,000. So raise your rent, onboard new clients, and track the right KPIs to reduce your operating costs. And if you need support in this, feel free to comment below with next steps. And either myself or a member of my team is gonna reach out to you to talk about how we might be able to support you. And if you know of a business owner who might wanna hear this information, please share this video with them or tag them below. All right, y'all, that's it for this time. We'll go ahead and see you in our next training session.